Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm going to continue the videos with the Oculus Quest 2. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add multiplayer capabilities to VR. I want to use a new solution called Normcore.io that is going to make it super, super easy to add this feature to any game. This can work with the Oculus Quest, this can work with a Mac game, with an iOS game, and also an Android game and other platforms. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to go through a demo that I created to basically show you this functionality and then we're going to be jumping into Unity and start looking at the code. So what you're looking at right now is I have the Unity editor running. I'm launching Unity on my Oculus Quest 2. So this area is for Norm Core Interactable. So every single one of these components have a multiplayer component associated with it. So I can, you know, move it around. You can see that that information gets sent back to the server and then synchronized to the client, which in this case is Unity. You can move it. Let's go ahead and stack it and see if physics work. These four red cubes have a rigid body. So some of the people that asked me about this, if, if physics will work, you can see the fixes are working. This one right here is kinematic. It also has a rigid body. The, re the reason for that is because this is a grabbable component and it requires a rigid body. But at the same time, it's kinematic, so it doesn't really you know, fall with gravity. And then the other one over there, it's going to be the one that got instantiated by, the, by a component that I'm gonna show you in this video. So we can go ahead and throw it. And if we throw it over there, it's gonna go ahead and throw it over there, you guys can see. And then just look at how fast that is, right? I can also, if I were to put this one right here, let me see if I can move it, yep. And the reason why it moves is because both of them have, you know, physics, which is rigid bodies on both of them. So that's basically what I have going on. Let me go ahead and show you some of the code and what is required to make this work. All right, guys, so this is gonna be the scene that we're going to be modifying to make it work with Norman. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be adding another table here that is going to contain all the different components for Norm Core IO. I'm also going to be cloning the the starting area here, which is going to be just just a title so that you guys know that that component is going to be for anything that we're going to be adding multiplayer on. So you say norm core that IO, IO components. So anything in there will be for that. And then what I'll do is on the velocity track queue, we're just going to be putting these ones right here. It's going to be just doing one. We can we can rename it as well. This could be multiplayer multiplayer cube. We'll just put it right here. And then I'll show you what we need to do in order for, uh, for that to work. So the first thing that I need to do is we need to go ahead and, and set up an account in normcore.io. I already did that and I'm using the free version. Just make sure that you do that. Once you do that, you're gonna create a new application. Just click on a new application and it's going to give you this API key. It's gonna be really helpful because we're gonna need that in order for us to communicate with the server. So, and then the next thing that you'll need is of course, this scene right here is using the XR Interaction Toolkit. I already downloaded it, but you're more than welcome to download it. Or you can use this code, which I'm gonna be submitting to GitHub. And then what I'll do is go ahead and download the component from Normcore, which is gonna be the Unity package. I'm gonna give you that. And then click on Import. It's going to import everything that we need. Okay, so it looks like it got imported. And then we're getting a couple of you know pop-ups in here. A new scope registry is now available. When you say close, I think it's fine. I just added this as a scope registry to the package manager. It's gonna go ahead and close it. And it's gonna tell you that it needs to perform some migration to your project. I'm just gonna say, go ahead and migrate it just to make sure that we don't have any conflicts. And you click on migrate and it should be done here in a minute. Norcore has finished migrating. Okay, I just hit okay. And that should be everything that we need to do there. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need to do and actually add a component called the real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click in here and then create empty. And this is gonna be norm core. I'll just call it norm core real time, real time. And then we can just go ahead and collapse this so that we have more, more space to look at this. And then click on add component and this is gonna be the real time. So this is gonna be what it's going to be connecting your API key. I already pasted, copy it from my, to my clipboard. You can see that I just pasted in there. And then if you want to specify a room name, you can specify right here. I'm gonna just leave it as default. There's really no need for me to change it. And it's gonna say, you know, you can do it through code or you can do it through here if you want to join this room on start. I'm just gonna leave it as default because that's how I basically got it working before. And then the next thing that you're gonna need is we're gonna need to add a component that is going to allow us to track the, the position of these and also send it to the server. So what I'll do is go ahead and go into my multiplayer cube. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these so we have more, you know, more space here to see. And then I'm gonna add a new component. This component is going to be a real-time transform. And if you select it, it's going to add a couple of components in here. It's gonna add the real-time view. And 
It's going to hook automatically the multiplayer queue, which is the transform that I, I wanted to add. And then if you look at a couple of the options in here, this is gonna say, it's gonna have a unique ID, and this is really important so that the multiplayer server can keep track of you know, this actual component. And then also any child views. The other component in here and setting that you can also set is prevent ownership takeover. This is going to allow, allow you to basically not let anybody else, let's say that somebody else logs in and you don't want that person to be modifying this cube. You can say, you know, prevent ownership takeover. And when they try to move that cube, it's not, the system is not going to allow, allow them to do that. The server is gonna block that. But if you want to allow them to, to interact with that cube, which is what I showed you in the beginning of the video, then you can just, you know, unset that. This is also another setting that is important that destroy when owner or last client leaves. This is if you don't want to have these components be persisting. If you want to destroy when somebody, you know, when the owner actually leaves, then it's going to destroy that. And that is helpful, like if you have, let's say you have a player and, you know, you don't want to leave that player hanging in there. You want to destroy the player if you finish, you know, and, you, and you're not playing that game anymore. And then this is also really helpful here, the owner. It just shows you in Unity if somebody logs in. I can see, you know, if these, if I'm the owner of this component or if I'm not the owner. The other thing that you can also do here is a real-time transform. This component is really important because it's the one that is going to keep track of the information, in, in this case, the position, the rotation, and the scale of this cube. So if I were to scale this, then and, and the client is connected, the client's going to be, the other clients are going, are going to be able to see any changes to that cube. Also, if you have, you know, if you want to see these, this is smooth, so I can interpolate it. If you don't want to stem interpolate it, you don't need to. The rigid body settings are also really helpful. Like if you don't want to, if you want to clear ownership, if nothing is happening to this cube and you want the ownership to be clear so that you know somebody else can claim ownership, you can use this setting, but you can maintain ownership on this cube, you know, even though there's nothing happening to the, to the cube, there's no movement on this cube. And then the velocity as well, if you want to send the velocity or if you want to derive the velocity from the position. To be honest, I left this intact. They didn't change anything in here when I was playing with it. So we can just leave that. And what I'll do here, it looks like I got to, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. This one, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add it to my resources folder here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do, I just have a resources folder in the, in the root. And we can just say original prefab, that's fine. It's going to be added to that. And then what I can do as well is I'm just gonna go ahead and move this one here. Perhaps I'll just put it right here. And then maybe we'll just have this other one right here. And then I'll just clone this one and then perhaps put it right there. I just wanna have a couple more because it's gonna be different to the experience that I showed you in the beginning because that one was already done. And then maybe we'll just add another one right over here. Okay, so that's cool and all, but that doesn't, you know, we can't really see anything just yet. And that's okay, I'll just show you here in a minute how this is going to work. Let me go ahead and rename these ones as well. I'll just go ahead and put it right here. And then another thing that I wanna do is, if you look at this teleport anchor, I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to be right over here because I want to be able to teleport to that location. That way we can, you know, we can interact with these objects as well. And I think that, that looks good. Perfect, so another thing that I wanna show you is, okay, well, that's cool, but how do I start interacting with them? And that's what I'm gonna do to show you. So when we point a ray to this, I wanna basically claim ownership because if we have multiple clients, again, I want the other clients to be able to move them, move them as well. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna add a new component and this one, we can just call it whatever we wanna call it. I'll just call it XR, we can just call it XR multiplayer. I think that's a cool, that's a cool name. We can move it right here to the very top. And then what I'll do as well here is I'm going to be creating a new script. Let's just go ahead and call it XR multiplayer multiplayer, there we go. And then I'll go ahead and just double click it to open it up. All right, so it looks at these open up. So let's go ahead and remove these methods. We're not gonna need it. So the method that we're gonna need here is gonna be one that we can use to claim ownership. So it's gonna say request ownership. And then I'm going to be using and getting the base interactable, which in our case is going to give us a reference to the cube that we're trying to select. So I'll just do XR base interactable. And then this one we can just call it XR base interactable, just like Unity is recommending and Visual Studio is recommending. There we go. But we need to bring the namespace here, so I'll just do control period to bring it in. So what I'm gonna do here is I wanna make sure that we get a couple of components that are gonna that are, that are gonna allow us to claim ownership. So 
If we go back to the, and look at one of the cubes, I'm gonna show you what we're trying to do. So if you look at the owner here, we can have an owner, you know, an owner of a view, or we can have an owner of a transform. We can clear ownership, we can request ownership. So if I were moving this, and let's say that I own it as a client, then the ownership is gonna be mine, but we don't wanna let anybody else to move that cube. So we're gonna let him as soon as they're selecting, if, we're, if they're selecting the cube, then we're gonna let him basically move that cube. So what, I'm, what I can do is I'm gonna say real-time transform and give me the XR base interactable, which in our case is gonna be the cube. I wanna get the component. The component is going to be a real-time transform. Time transform. And again, this is gonna, it's not going to be existing because we haven't been, we didn't bring the namespace. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it in and just go ahead and fix this here. There we go. And then I'll do the same thing with the view. I want to be the owner of the view and also the owner of the transform. And I'm still reading through, reading through that documentation, but I'll just show you basically how this works. So it's gonna get that component and normally it's the view and then the transform. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say, you know what? As long as we do have the view, let me make sure that I make this capital. If this cube has a view, because let's say that I want to select these cubes, I don't want to claim ownership on these cubes because these are no multiplayer components where these ones are, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a check here. I'm gonna say, okay, if the, if the real-time view is not null, if I can type, I think I'm, I'm having a hard time typing today. But if it's not null, that means that we're, you know, it is a, it is a component that has a multiplayer component, which in our case is gonna be norm core. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the request ownership. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the transform. So I'm also going to be claiming ownership on these guys. And then what's gonna happen is now it's going to allow me as a client, let's say that this one is on the Oculus Quest, on the Oculus Quest 1. And the Oculus Quest 2, it's you know somewhere the player is some some in some other location. But me as the Oculus Quest 1, I want to select this transform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, as long as this is not null, meaning that it has this component, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be requesting ownership. Okay, so that's gonna be what's going to allow us as a you know from array from an actual ray to select these ones and, and actually move them around. But we need to do one more thing and that's going to be, you know, telling the, the ray that we're going to be claiming ownership upon selection. So to do that, we're gonna have to go into the left hand. And if you look at the left hand, it's going to have a, a left base controller and also a left teleport controller. And if you were to look at these, this has an XR controller. You can also look at it has an X, XR ray interactor if you go to the base here, you're gonna see that it has the X array interactor. This one is enabled, so this is the one that we're gonna be doing it on. So in here, you have a couple of events that are going to be executed. Depending on the state, you have the on hover enter, you have the on hover exit, and you also have the on select enter. So this is the one that we're gonna be that we're gonna be using, the on select enter. It's gonna happen as soon as you you basically hit the trigger button on the on the VR controller. That is going to emit this event. This is gonna have a an event handler associated with it, we're gonna emit it, and then we're gonna be capturing that. So what I'll do here is if you look at the, if we go to the script, we haven't really associated that script with the, I actually did to the, with the XR multiplayer. I think we created it, but we never associated it. So I'm just gonna say XR multiplayer. Now we have it associated. So now we can go back into our left base controller, and then we can associate that method with the XR multiplayer. And so what we're gonna do, and then if we go here to the functions, you're gonna see that we have the request ownership. So what's gonna happen, like I said, when, when we do a selection, we're gonna be calling that, and then that's going to go through this method. We're gonna be claiming ownership of that multiplayer component, and then we're gonna be able to move it around pretty much. And we can just go ahead and remove these components here, and let's go ahead and yeah, just dismiss that message. Okay, so that's cool and all. So now let's go ahead and add another type of, so the other one that I wanna add is going to be the kinematic one that I show you. And I'm gonna be using exactly the same component, just clone it. I'm gonna go ahead and go into rigid body. And let me go ahead and make sure that I have, yeah, and make sure you enable the kinematic. I just want this one just to be a little bit different. And then what I'll do here, so go into this one. This one is using the grab block material. Let's go ahead and use that same material, XR grab. And let's see if I can, let me go, ahead, go ahead and go back into that. And see if I can select it and the grab block, block material. Let's go ahead and search for that. Grab block material. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it into this other component. That, that way we can see 
it's gonna just be a little bit different, right? Because this one is kinematic, where the other one is not. I just wanted to show you something different. And perhaps we can, uh, you know, we can add another one here too. We can also, if we wanted to, we can also resize it so that we have something different to, to play with. We can just put this one right here. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put it on the on the ground. I think it's it's going to it's going to look better. Okay, so we have these ones that have physics. These ones also have physics, but they are not going to be falling with gravity. And then the last one that I want to show you is I want to show you how you can use the Norm Core API to actually instantiate different objects. So if you go into here, I created a new object called the the multiplayer cube. And that cube and, and that we're gonna be using, right? So let me go ahead and go back into here and collapse everything. And if we go into the norm core real time, I'm going to be adding a new script. Let me go ahead and add another one here. This one we can just say that it's going to be, I'm just gonna come up with a name. So it's gonna be the XR Q manager. I think that's I think that's fine. And we can give it a, if you wanted to, you know, give it a, a multiplayer type name, you can do that as well. But I think, actually, let's do that. Just that way you guys know, you guys know that it's going to be for multiplayer. Let's do XR Multiplayer Manager. Let's go ahead and hit rename. Let me make sure that these get renamed here. I'm going to change the view here so that we can see the names a lot easier. And there we go. So these two components are going to be the ones that we created in this video. Okay, so... What I'm gonna do in this video is in this class is we're gonna be couple we're gonna do a couple of things. So I'm gonna add a serializable field. This serializable field is gonna have a private property, actually a private field. So it's gonna be prefab name. This one's gonna be the name of the prefab. We can set that through the inspector. I can leave it as blank for now. And then the next thing that I'm gonna need is I'm also going to be needing the a reference to the real time. So since this component is gonna be in the same in the same component that has a real time script. We can just we can just get it through the through the start method and, and add this reference. So I'm just gonna say real time. Make sure that I bring in my namespace here. It's gonna be real time, right? Then the next thing that I can do is I can add an, also a variable so that we can store the the actual cube that we're gonna be creating. And then I'm just gonna call it local multiplayer cube. I think the name makes it sound cool and, and more complex than it is. This is actually gonna be pretty easy. And then what I'll do is I'll add the awake method here. And then on the awake method, I'm gonna say real time. And then we're gonna be adding, you know, getting the component. We're gonna get, get in the real time component, which is going to allow us to communicate with the server. So that's pretty much what we need to do here. And I also need to know when, you know, if I connect it to a room, so I'm just gonna say they connect to a room. And if I did connect to a room, I'm gonna need a handler. So I'm just gonna hit tab so that it can create, basically it's going to create this method that is gonna get executed as soon as I connect to a room. We're gonna remove this. We're gonna actually implement that method. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to basically create a new instance of our, of our cube, right? So we're gonna do the reference that I have here. We're just gonna go ahead and copy that and then paste it. And instead of creating, you know, an, an instance in a cube by using the Unity API, we're gonna be using the real time. And there's gonna be a static method in here. We can just say instantiate. And this is gonna tell us what, you know, what object do we want to instantiate. The object that we want to instantiate is going to be, it's going to have the prefab name that we say right above it. And then I'm gonna do comma. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the position of this object. The position of this object is going to be a new vector three. This new vector three, it's going to have the transfer position, which is going to be the position of this object. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna grab the value of X and I'm gonna I'm gonna sum that. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna need another variable here. It's gonna be prefab count. And I'm gonna get the prefab count of every single prefab that we have in the, basically in this room. So what I'll do is just grab the real time and I'll just say room and then we'll grab the data store and the prefab models. And it's gonna give us a count how many prefabs are currently in the store, which is gonna be cool because the reason why I need to get this count is so that I can place this accordingly to, you know, how many how many prefabs we have. If we have 10 clients, it's gonna have 10 different cubes that are gonna get created, but I wanna make sure they don't collide with each other. I wanna position them accordingly. So that's what I'm doing this. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna basically grab the value of X. I'm gonna sum the, the prefab count, and then I'm gonna multiply that by 0.5. 
and let's go ahead and make that a flow. And I'm going to do comma, and then I'm going to do transform. Then we're going to need the position of y. This one, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to collide. I'm just going to say, set it to the same position of, of y. And then I'll just do transform the position of z. There we go. And then what we're going to need is we're going to need to also specify the rotation. So for the rotation, I can just use the rotation of the current object. So you can just say transform that rotation. And now we get into, you know, some of the properties that are going to be really beneficial if you're, you know, you're trying to build a multiplayer application. So in this case, I want to, I want to make sure that I specify if this is going to be owned by the client or not. So I want this object to all, only be owned by the person who instantiate this. So let's say that the Oculus Quest 1 instantiate this, that he is going to be, or she's going to be the owner of this object. So it's going to use that property. And then I'm going to say, you know, prevent ownership takeover. This is what's going to allow you to either take it over or not take it over. So I'm going to say, I'm going to set it to false. I don't want anybody to take over this. Let's say that this was the player. I don't want anybody to be messing with the, the actual player. And then there's another property here that allow us to, if we want to destroy this object, say that we are the player, we want to basically destroy ourselves because we're no longer in the game. Then in that case, we can just set this to true. And then we're going to be using another property here that is going to allow us to pass this real time instance. Okay. So as far as like the code of instantiating a new object and then basically having the norm core server track this object, this is all you need to do basically to do that. And then another thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I can position this object correctly so that we don't, you know, we can, we can see it on the, on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a basically draw a gizmo. So I'm going to say on draw gizmo and we can say select it. And I'm going to say the gizmo, the gizmo's color is going to be in this case, I'm just going to make it yellow. And then I also need to specify the gizmo size. So I'm just going to say, and also what I'm going to be drawing. So I'm just going to draw a sphere at the position of this game object. And I'm going to make that sphere have a radius of 0 0.05 flow. There we go. So just so you know, and we didn't really need to make this object uh, an instance of this, of this class. We can just make it a var because we're, we're not using it anywhere else. And then we can just remove the namespaces here that we're not using. So pretty much what we're doing is we're going to get a reference to the real time uh, ref, uh, game object which in our case, the real time component that, that is associated with this object. And then we're going to say, okay, if I connect it to the room, I'm going to be getting the count of how many, pre so uh, how many prefabs we have in that room. If we don't have any, it's going to use the, basically the same position of this. And then it's just going to say one, and it's just going to be summing, you know, a, a small amount. But if we have two, it's going to be two times that amount, which means the value of X plus, you know, that whatever that amount is going to be, which in our case is going to be, it's going to be one if we have two, prefabs and then, you know, and then so on. So, and then what's going to happen is we're going to have these, it's going to allow us to select it. That way we can put it right on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into my norm core real time here. And then this one, I'm going to be adding the multiplayer and it's going to be the multiplayer manager. And this is name here is going to be really helpful because we want to only instantiate this object. So I'm going to go back here and then make sure that I have that set. And if you go here, there's going to be a little sphere here. There we go. And this is the reason why I added a gizmo so that I, I want to know where that it's getting placed. So that way, you know, if you want to test this with a thousand clients, you can see where the clients are going to be instantiating. So it's going to basically put them at this location. And as we add more, it's going to be moving on that, on that direction. And you can also clone this one if you want to clone, clone that one. So that's basically everything that you need to do in order for that for that to work and multiplayer cube. I think that's going to, it's going to work just fine. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. So what I can do before we, before we call it done, we can actually just see play and see if this is going to instantiate an object correctly. You guys can see that it created, and I'm also seeing another one because I just launched that on my Oculus Quest 2, but you can see that it shows that in this case, that it's going to be a remote client and also the same thing with other, with this other component. So, which means that I can't really move it. It shows me that it moves it, but it doesn't actually change that transform position on the Oculus, on the Oculus Quest 2. So in this case, it's because I'm, I'm the Unity editor. But in this case, if I select this other one, you're gonna see that this is on by the local client. So what if I wanted to move that other cube on the Oculus Quest 2? So let me just show you that 
that actually that's going to happen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate here and start moving that other cube. And you guys can see how that you know starts moving because I am pointing the controller to that cube. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.